Hey everybody, it's Adam Farkas along with Paul Farkas. Hi everyone. Now, today we're doing something a little different. So Paul, you may remember that earlier in the year you and I took a trip to the Contact Lens Museum. Oh yes. Do you recall that trip? So <laughs> Paul and I went, it's in, it's in Forest Grove, Oregon. It's an actual museum of contact lenses where they have artifacts. Uh, and we actually got to see contact lenses from the beginning, right? Yep, from absolutely. From a hundred years ago. So we're talking about lenses that are made of glass that were actually you know, made with fire <laughs> on a lathe. You can, they had the, the machine there that made these things. So um, we got to see the very infancy of the contact lens industry. And then they also sort of showed us products that came out over the years, right? Yep. To the time when you first started in practice, yep, right? So absolutely. you saw some, some RGPs and then you saw some HEMA lenses and we went all the way through time. As a matter of fact, I, I, I was willing to donate my body if they make a glass, a wax museum there. <laughs> I think uh, you can, they can just stand me up. They'll, in the put you on, they'll put you on display. <laughs> so I guess my point in bringing this up is that, um, you know, we got to see how the technology has evolved over time. And it's amazing what people used to put up with in the beginning, right? Uh, that they would tolerate these glass lenses that, you know. Absolutely. Uh, in the very beginning, 100 years ago. But now we have incredible technology. And that's what today is all about. We're going to be talking about sort of the latest technologies that have come out, right. um, the Precision One lens. And to help us learn all about the lens today, we have a true expert with us. Not we, me. <laughs> not you, <laughs> a real expert. So today we have Dr. Susan Resnick, who is the president and managing partner of Dr. Farkas Casalo Resnick and Associates, uh, which is a contact lens and anterior segment specialty practice in New York City and Long Island. That is the practice that you founded right. way back when, and Sue has taken it over and grown it, uh, it you know, measurably since then. Um, and so we're really happy to have her here with us today to sort of talk about the lens and what we can do. Um, so uh, I just want to remind everyone that Dr. Resnick received compensation from Alcon for participation in this program. And right. with all that aside, Susan, thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Sue. Hey, everyone. This is really awesome. So not only do I get to talk to a pioneer and his little pioneer, <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but I get to talk about pioneering technology. So uh, Yep. Precision one, and it's an alliteration of P's, and this is great. There you go. And, you know, in fact, talking about technology, you know, you're joining us from Zoom, so whoever thought that this would be a thing, right? That's right. Um, so it's just sort of amazing how the whole world has changed around us, even in the last, you know, 10, 15, or 20 years. So, Susan, you know, you mentioned that contact lenses obviously are still an important part of the practice even today. Uh, and I know that dropout has always been an issue in the past. Uh, so, you know, what are you seeing these days with Dropout? How are you preventing it? Are there any techniques that you're using that you could share with us? Yeah, so Dropout is a, is a big deal, especially since ours is a specialty contact lens practice. And, you know, upwards of 60% of our revenues come from our contact lens services and materials. But if I extend that to the broader public, um, we know that about 200 billion Americans wear con um, need vision correction now. And a little under 20%, um, you know, wear contact lenses. And we know that patients like contact lenses because of the natural vision, um, freedom for sports, um, you know, and the cosmetic appearance. So, you know, they're going after lenses for specific reasons. And we still know, based upon studies, that roughly 20% of patients drop out in the first year. And that's, you know, that's disturbing, both because we want to satisfy our patients. It reflects back on us as um, successful practitioners, um, but also because of the revenues. So why do patients drop out? We know that there are three drivers of dropout. Um, that would be poor vision, poor comfort, and poor handling. But what everybody needs to kind of understand, and this was a, you know, a kind of an awaken, waking call for me, was that 57% of the patients don't tell their doctors so we have always been very methodical in our practice in doing a post-dispensing um, call to be sure they're doing okay. We follow up with them a week later with an in-office visit. We're not just a one and done. And, you know, it really drives um, the loyalty to the practice and it lets us diffuse, um, you, know, or, um, de you know, diffuse any problems the patient may be having either with vision comfort or handling. Um, but what's nice is Given this information, Alcon has really risen to the occasion for us with the Precision One. So this new technology that they developed has at its core um, 
benefits to meet these three drivers of dropout. And um, this is a totally new lens. Um, they leveraged the technology. If everybody can remember back, um, you know, about seven years ago, when they introduced the Dailies Total One, it's called water gradient technology. So they used the success of that chemical concept or chemistry concept, and they brought us a new material called Verifilcon. And they, this particular lens is different in that at its core, it has 51% water and about um, upwards of 80% at its surface. And what's different about this lens is that it has surface chemistry. If you think back, um, legacy or traditional or HEMA lenses, they were bulk property lenses. They basically, it was one monomer, one um, or one polymer, one plastic um, filled up with water. And there may have been some cross linkers in there, some wetting agents within the lens, but it was a homogeneous lens. And so what this new Precision One does is it takes the, a new silicon polymer and it drives the moisture to the surface of the lens. And the whole technology together, we call smart surface technology. So it's a recipe of those three things, um, you know, the water, um, the new polymer and the manufacturing technology. Um, they use a double-sided molding technology. Um, so this lens is a new design from its inception. Um, and it's just been a big boost um, for my practice. And, you know, we can talk more about what I actually see um, with patients and who I select for this lens. Right, because that is, of course, the big question. Who do you select for this lens? Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously, there's a, a place in the market for this lens. And it feels to me, you know, just by looking at everything that you've you said here so far, that this is really sort of a mainstream lens, right, that you could kind of pick it out and go to right from the beginning for, for new wearers or for young people or just about anybody. Yeah, so um, I'm going to, so the answer to that question is that this is a lens for the masses. So it is certainly a great lens for new wearers because it helps us address, um, based on its very unique design, um, the core drivers of dropout. So patients are comfortable, they see well, it handles well. So it's my first reach for new patients, but um, I don't hesitate to take patients out who of other lenses that are in competitive lenses. You know, one of the reasons patients comes to our practice is that they expect us to automatically discuss new technologies. That's why they come. Um, and the goal in having patients come and to be contact lens wearers is that it gives us greater touch points with them for all of our services. We know that contact lens wearers on an annualized basis um, drive more dollars into the bottom line. Um, they refer more patients. So having happy contact lens wearers makes for a much more successful practice. So I'm getting my new wearers in, but I'm also constantly upgrading my current wearers. And we can even talk a little bit about one of the studies that Alcon did. The objective of this in vitro study was to evaluate the contact lens wettability of Precision One, Daily's Total One, the BioTrue One Day, One Day AccuView Moist, My Day, and Clarity One by measuring their water breakup time and rate of water breakup. And they use the interfacial de-wetting and drainage optical platform system. Precision One did demonstrate significantly longer water breakup time, greater than four times longer than One Day AccuView Moist, My Day Clarity, and greater than two times longer than Bio True One Day. And as we expected, Daily's Total One did demonstrate a higher water breakup time than Precision One. Again, just keep in mind that this is an in vitro study that doesn't translate into clinical benefit. So basically, when the rubber hits the road, uh, which patients do you actually uh, suggest precision one immediately when they come in? This has been my first reach lens for new wearers. And um, I like the lens because, you know, the vision's great. Um, it's really comfortable. And I just, I'm not, again, I'm going to repeat, I just don't dispense the lens and, you know, then in a year later, wonder why they're not ordering them. We have a very specific um, management protocol where we call them three or four days later after the dispensing. I see them back a week or two later. Um, and then um, I see my patients twice a year, but certainly with a lens like this, you know, once you've seen them, um, you know, you can certainly dispense a, a one-year um, supply. 
So I'm taking some of my patients out of some of the former lenses that I was using. Um, and, you know, so here's an interesting thing. As I started to fit the lens and, you know, we've had some excellent lenses over the years and I wanted to get my, uh, upgrade my patients into a silicone hydrogel. So I was bold. I asked the patient, I told the patient I wanted to try with something new and I gave them all the reasons. And I discovered on my own and, you know, just uh, anecdotally that these patients were doing better. It was the precision one. And sure enough, Alcon came out with this study and I went, oh, I could have told them that, but this study supported what I was already seeing in practice and that, um, you know, I didn't, I can't remember one patient who didn't say they wanted to switch. I'm sure there may have been one or two, but um, this statistic really fits in what I was seeing, you know, in my practice. And I, um, I picked out, when I get a new lens in practice, interesting, you said rubber to the road. I, um, I put the lens to work. I, I basically pick tough patients, easy patients in between. I want to learn very quickly. And I give myself a learning curve of 10 um, because we have four other doctors in the office. And if each of us does 10, that makes 50. That's a pretty good end for one practice to quickly know where this lens is going to fit in. And it was unanimous among both myself and my partners that this was going to be our first reach workhorse lens. So, you know, Susan, up, up on the screen right now, I put up a little chart, you know, showing a, a little matrix of value, uh, you know, of, of, of the price point of a lens, value mainstream versus premium. And you can sort of see the precision one is sort of dead center in the middle on this particular chart. Yeah, so that's the beauty of this. I mean, you know, these lenses, we call this the mighty middle, and there's a lot of great lenses in this category. But when you think about what I just said, where we have a new material, um, with a new water content, we have smart surface technology, and it's designed to meet all the needs of the patients that we talked about and prevent dropout. You now have a lens that offers all of that, but in the same price range as the lenses that we have been using previously. So the patient is getting all of this, we are getting all of this, um, but dollar wise, um, it's not going to be more challenging um, for our patients or our practices in terms of. Uh, promoting this lens, fitting this lens, and transferring patients into this lens. Yep. And in fact, we're actually showing a bunch of da uh, daily daily lenses up here, but you know, you have people, I'm sure, who are still not wearing daily lenses. Is this the lens that you reach for when you want them to switch? Um, so, so yes, uh, it is. Um, you know, the only caveat being, um, you know, we have a lot of patients, you know, some patients with astigmatism, multifocal, so um, you know, fortunately, Alcon has within its portfolio lenses for us to meet those patients' needs as well. But um, anybody whose prescription matches, yes, we are um, reaching for this lens. We probably should talk a little bit about Alcon's portfolio, I guess, too, um, because that's another thing that I think doctors get tripped up on. Whenever a new lens comes out, and this is indeed a new lens, this is a brand new, um, you know, uh, polymer, brand new plastic. Um, the manufacturing technology is different. The surface chemistry is different. And then you have, you know, these other lenses in the portfolio and they're like, okay, well, where do these fit in? And so here's my take on it. Um, so the Aqua Comfort Plus, which was a legacy lens, which again, worked well when we didn't have anything better. It's still fine, but I really relegate that to patients who really have dollars and cents at the top of their mind who need, um, you know, kind of a lens that will fit into that kind of price range. Uh, I'm not reaching for that other than the economics. Um, the Precision One, pretty much for everybody, um, except maybe those patients who need um, the Daily's Total One, which as we saw, it does offer a little bit more moisture at the surface. It is a different lens totally. And so we also didn't mention uh, yet, but probably should, in terms of design of the lens, of the Precision One, can you speak to that? Because I'm sure people are familiar with Dale's Aqua Comfort Plus and DT1. Is the design similar? Right. Um, so the design is not similar. It's a totally different lens. Um, it's 51% water at its core. It's upwards of 80% surface chemistry, and it's a Vera Filcon material. What's nice about this lens, the parameters are a wide range. It goes from a plus eight to a minus 12. What's also really cool is it has a class one UV blocker. I always use that as a, I'll use the word humble brag. I love to tell patients they're getting extra stuff all wrapped in, much like when we prescribe a pair of glasses where you bundle it. 
And, you know, they're paying a price, but look at everything you're getting. And we know it's not protection. We know they still need to wear sunglasses, but it, it gives that extra benefit, you know, of protection. So um, it also has a DK over of, of 100, which for a daily wear silicone is great. Uh, we all know from all the studies that have been done that that exceeds what the lens, what the cornea will actually need in an open eye state. Um, so the health is there, the vision is there, the handling is there, the UV protection is there. Um, we can check off all of those things, whereas some of the other lenses, other brands um, may have two or three of those things. So this is an all encompassing design. Great. Right. All right. Well, see, I think I think we covered all the big points here. Thank you so much for doing this today. Right. Um, great to see you guys. Yeah, it's great to see you as always. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see each other in person again sometime. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sooner, nice? Sooner and this was, I tell you, I almost forgot to take my mask off. No, this was <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Sue. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good day. Bye bye.